Hello everybody, this is Beano4657. Welcome back to another uh, welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Tales of Vesperia. Okay, in the last episode we got to the Oasis Town, which is located in the middle of the desert if you didn't know. Okay, um in between videos I actually changed our equipment around just a little bit and I also um yeah, de-equipped and re and equipped some new skills that we might use. I'm just going to show you the equipment because the skills isn't really all that important to show. Um, the only ones I really changed, um, I got a new sub weapon for uh, Raven. It didn't increase his attack power much, but it gives them the happiness skills, which are good to have. Um, for um, Rita, I de-equipped that gem that increased that increased her magic. I mean, her fire resistance, and replaced it with a flare cape. But it has less fire resistance, but it does increase her physical defense by over 50, and it, and it further enhances her magic defense. And the same thing with Estelle, only I have her equipped with an aqua cape, which increases water resistance. There is a wind cape that um, that we'll be able to get later. Um, as you can see, everyone still has their same resistance attribute. Okay, but here's something that I i didn't get to show yet, but if you go down into the character status and you go down to attachment, you can attach certain stuff, uh, like you can attach extra objects or like costume items. And the canteens that the, um, that the innkeeper gave us can all actually be worn. And I'm going to show you what they all look like. Uh, Rita's is actually really easy to notice. It's right on her back, above her book. And Estelle's a little bit harder to notice. It's right on the back of her hip there. It kind of looks like this seed of some kind. I'm not really sure. Uh, Yuri's is actually pretty easy to see since it's plain white. Uh, Carol's is a little bit harder to see because it kind of blends in with his costume, but if you look at it from the side, it's easy to see. It's that green thing on his back that has a weird character on it. Uh, Repeats is easy to see. It's the barrel thing that's used in cartoons these days. Actually, they weren't. Actually, they aren't using cartoons these days. They were using cartoons back then, like in Tom and Jerry and Looney Tunes. Ravens is actually extremely hard to see. If you look at his belt, like on the le on the right side of, his, like on his right on his jacket, you'll be able to see it. Like now it's gone, and then now it's there. It's that gray thing right there. It's really hard to see. Um. Judas is really not that hard to see at all because it's bright pink and she wears white, so... Okay, I think that's all I really need to show, and with that, we can head into the desert. Oh, we got a skit. Why would someone set up a barrier in a place like this? Actually, they discovered the Blasty at the bottom of the Oasis and have just been using it as is. A nice person in town told me that. And with it sunk in the Oasis, no one could move it. So I guess they had to leave it where it was. No one would trudge out into a scorching wasteland like this just to set up a barrier. No, oh, that explains it. Guess there's a reason for everything. <laughs> yeah, people are just kind of... I guess I wouldn't say lazy, but I mean, they're just like, you know, let's take what we can get. Okay, so I actually don't like the desert. Let's go to the spring so we can fill the canteens. Oh, that's right! I never did that. <laughs> okay. We can't go out there with empty canteens. That's stupid. We filled up our water. I think we're ready to go. Right. Stop it. Let go. Ooh, what's going on? <laughs> Bad boys and girls that break curfew must be punished by the magistrate. No way. We're going to look for mommy and daddy. Leave these children to me. I'll see that they're properly disciplined. Stay out of this, stranger. Please forgive these children. I will go and apologize in person to the magistrate on their behalf. Hey, wait. Aren't you... He's just like, yeah, stop it. Let's just get out of here. <laughs> My deepest apologies. Of course, the knights would know who she is. Do you think that maybe I could have handled that better? Hey, it worked, didn't it? <laughs> I like how the other three are just, like, in the background. Thanks for saving us from those bad guys. Well, they're not really bad guys, but... <laughs> My name is Alf. My sister is Layla. I think that's how you pronounce it. What happened to your mom and dad? They got taken into the desert in the magistrate's big wagon. Someone told me they're going to look for Pharaoh. Really now? Pharaoh. Yeah. <laughs> but what do you think they're planning on doing once they find him? 
and use the townspeople to do their dirty work? Despicable. Hey, big bro, are we going to look for mommy and daddy? No, you're not. <laughs> if, you, if you kids go in the desert, you'll die for sure. Ah! <laughs> Judith! We'll look for your parents. You kids can't go out into the desert. Really? I don't lie. You don't mind, do you, Carol? Nope, fine by me. You're surprisingly agreeable. His guild is guided by justice, after all. Maria's like, I don't understand justice. Here, take this, because you're so nice. Okay. The glass bead. It's a precious gem. It's our reward for taking the job. Now that we've gotten paid in advance, we got our work cut out for us. <laughs> yeah, okay. But what concerns me is that the Empire is investigating Pharaoh. Yeah, what could they want with him? We're gonna go find out! Okay, now that we're six minutes in the video already, god, I wasted so much time. What's the matter? I was just thinking about the magistrate, what the magistrate here could be planning. It's so strange that he'd be looking for Pharaoh. Hmm. Though I guess it'd make sense if the Empire wanted to eliminate a monster that was trying to kill a princess. But they don't know that he's after Estelle yet, do they? So why are they going after him then? How should I know? <laughs> and we still don't know why there's a curfew in the town. Anyway, first we should go to the Sands of Kagor. Right, we can look into the mysteries of this town once we get back. If we don't rescue those kids' parents soon, they'll kneel over <laughs> over in this heat. That's true. So then, to get into the middle of the desert, we should go through here, right? Where's here? I don't get what you guys are talking about. Can we finally go now? Thank you. Sands of Kagor. I don't like this place. There's no shade anywhere. Never imagined it would be this hot. Nobody lasts long out here without the proper supplies. What's with him? He looks like he's out for a walk in the park. Hey, old man. Aren't you hot? Hot? Heck yeah! Uh, I'm sizzling over here, burning right up! Mm. That lousy... I feel like the temperature goes up every time somebody says the word hot. We'll be fine, so long as we remember to keep our water well stocked. Right, the cacti. The parents of those children are out there with no supplies whatsoever. We do have Pharaoh to look for, but... Yes. Would it be alright if we took care of Alf and Layla's request first? Um, but... You've more than fulfilled your obligation to me. Estelle! Okay then, let's find their parents. Jeez, these cutscenes are so long. Was that Pharaoh? Then he really is somewhere in the desert! Settle down. You'll get plenty of attention once we're done helping those kids. We keep going and going, but all we get is more sand and more blue sky. You're doing better than me if you can look at the sky, Raven. The only thing I see is sand. How come an old fart like you has so much energy anyway? Talking's only gonna wear you out. If one of us goes down, it'd be about all we could manage to get them back to safety. And I, for one, am in no mood to be giving out piggyback rides. If I collapse, Raven, you can carry me. Sorry, but this back's reserved for ladies only. I'll die before I collapse. I won't <laughs> let myself be a burden either. The same goes for me, of course. Hey, there's no reason to go stomping on an old man's feelings, is there? Well, I don't know, it depends on how you put it. Okay, so the Sands of Gregor are a really strange place. We'll but no time. we got new enemies to fight, so we don't have time to explain. So this is a fire spirit. We against water, of course, so... It sucks that the resistance to everything except water. That's what sucks. So, if... so having Rita here really helps, but 
then again, there isn't that much you can do, but strike arcs will work just the same, obviously. That was too easy. Yeah, whatever. I'm not done yet. Jeez, the screen looks so bright right now, and it's usually so dark. But as you go through the desert, you'll notice that the water, that that canteen thing keeps going down. Let's fill up our water here. But this is a ouch. <laughs> What an idiot! Here, use your head a little. Looks like this situation calls for a little extra help. Canteen filling time. <laughs> Me next. We need to make sure to keep hydrated. Right, we wouldn't want to get sunstroke. If everyone's finished, let's go. You'll lose HP gradually as you walk when the water level the canteen reads at zero. Watch your canteen as you advance. Yeah, but it's not too hard to actually run out here. I don't know why. They just made it a little bit too easy, if you ask me. Because there's cacti everywhere. Like, right here. Though that didn't give us that much. But fighting actually drains it a lot more, so... Sometimes you just don't want to... Uh, what, do what do you call it? Don't want to grind as much here. So these guys are only resist against fire, obviously. So Estelle's photon attack will still work. Ah, oh, crap. I don't know if it matters how long the battle lasts, of how much the water will be drained, but just in case... Well, I don't think it actually does do that. Okay, Here I guess go. he's got Yay. it. No, I don't think it really matters all that much. So I guess we can identify more monsters. Oh god. We'll destroy them in no time. This is guy's called a cactus, isn't he? Cactus, really? Only resisting at fire, but he's not weak against anything. I think that's the only new enemy here. So that's just you splash against these slower moving guys right here. This guy keeps spamming water spells or something. Someone protect me while I'm casting. Okay. Oh god, I hate it when the guard that attack. Come on, he's totally dead. That's how to finish him off. Um, where did everyone go? Okay. <laughs> I never thought I'd have to rely on Carol, but whatever works. Okay, I'm sorry I'm not talking. I'm just trying to concentrate here. Ugh. Anyway, um, what can I talk about? Um, I was actually playing Tales of Symphonia earlier today. I was trying to get farther in that. I think I'm getting close to the end of the first disc, but I'm not sure because, well, I never played that game before. But, um, I do like Tales of Vesperia better than Symphonia for one really good reason. The controls are so much better. Like, the battles feel a lot more fluent and easier to use. Like, it's just... Um, like, Tales of Symphonia on GameCube, although I heard that the Wii one does have this, but, um, the GameCube one doesn't have free running, so you're only restricted to running left and right, which makes it really easy for, like, a boss enemy to just corner you and then just keep hitting you until you die. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it if you get cornered in that game, so... and teamwork! That's wonderful! Yeah, whatever. I know that's wonderful. I don't know what cactus needles are used for. I never really had any use for them. But anyway, but yeah, that's kind of the main problem I've been running into with Tales of Symphonia. Okay, you now here's another part about the Sands of Kagor, is that randomly, it'll just change from night to day. I don't know how it determines that, but it just happens. I won't lose. And when it does turn from night to day, you get different enemies. So we'll have to identify these guys too. This is Blue Roper. Their resistance and weakness actually change. So, when it's nighttime, use fire, and when it's daytime, use water. Ouch. 
Get away. Oh god, I need to get it lined up here. I think Fireball is the only spell... No. Uh, Spiral Flare is another one. Um, but... I think those are the only two spells that actually attack in a straight line, and that you actually have to be able to aim with it. That was cool! Okay, now we have these weird starfish guys here. We got a head start. It doesn't seem there. Okay, a dryad. He gets fire, of course, since it's nighttime. So I'm gonna identify this guy. I think this is an orange star man, I think that was called. Oh, superstar O. Weak against wind, resist against earth, so just use whatever spell you want, really. I mean, well, obviously you're not supposed to use earth, but... Why did he just dash over here to me? Why was he attacking me? Okay, whatever. He's really fast! Okay. I never really fought too many of these guys, so I always kind of wonder, what's the point of them? They're kind of weak. They can't even really hurt Rita all that much. Time to finish him off. The sign of victory. Damn. Yay! You got pretty good. Oh, I feel so powerful. Yeah, you better. Okay, I think this guy might. Okay, no, he's not an enemy. I'm sorry. But we need to find an ice spirit or water spirit soon. Wait a second. Why am I using fire? Do, 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 do. Nothing to talk about, because all I'm doing is just concentrating on the fights. I don't know, I just kind of get hypnotized by these fights somehow. Um, Estelle is apparently paralyzed, which means that you can't attack, but you can still use magic. Even though it's not necessary, I will cure it, because I just don't like having status effects. You also might have noticed that um, at nighttime, a, your water drains a lot slower. You know, we can equip that. She only loses four magic attacks, so that's actually pretty useful. It increases her physical attack by a lot. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, we need to identify these guys. There are too many. We'll get every last one. Oh wait, yeah, Ice Bat. Okay, we haven't seen this guy yet. Ice Bat, we against fire. We'll be seeing other Ice Bats later in the game, but that's not until like way, way later. So I figured they were like really weak. But apparently, I think they were like a different version, but I'm not entirely sure. Oh crap. Come on, get away from me. Why are three monsters following me? Can you get away from me, please? Oh. Damn, I didn't mean to jump. Okay, there we go. What kind of weird attack is that? Mm, he's not dying. Okay. We're done. I don't know why you would feel good. It's like, I learned a skill. I feel good. You know what this place reminds me of? Um, have you have you guys ever played Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles on the GameCube? There's a desert area that's actually kind of like this place. And it's, it, it's like a really important area, too. Oh god, we got some new enemies here. Uh, I'm gonna do what, is this a phoenix? Firebird. Same thing. What's the what's the difference between a, a firebird and a phoenix? <laughs> Except for the fact that phoenixes can be reborn somehow. I'm not really sure how the mythology works, but apparently, if you get a certain number of fatal strikes with Rita, you'll get a title for her that changes her costume, which is actually not 
too hard to get because, um, like I said in a previous part, in text anyway, I didn't actually say it, but um, Rita gets a lot of fatal strike hits just because they have infinite range pretty much. So we're going to hit some of these cactus here and refill our water, but we're kind of running out of cactus here, so we're going to have to go, we're just going to have to stop wandering around and go forward.